This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this lesson is Joy in Heaven. Joy and happiness are wonderful things to experience. We would all like to have more joy and greater happiness, and we delight in seeing our loved ones blessed with happy, joyful lives. At the same time, there are some people who are sour grapes people. They want to steal happiness and replace it with the misery they feel. Possibly that's from jealousy, or maybe just from their own negative life experience. Christians have long known that heaven is a place of joy. There are wonderful descriptions of what we will enjoy once we pass from this life into God's presence. We will be with our Heavenly Father, enjoying glories that are too wonderful for proper description in human terms. What God has prepared for us is outside our experience or reference points. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for those who love him. We learn of all of us around God's glorious throne, on golden pavement, dressed in dazzling and spotless white, overcome by the wonder and glories of God's direct presence, free from sorrow and pain. There is a dazzling city, the New Jerusalem, where we enjoy living in delightful dwelling made for us by Christ. Jesus said He will go and prepare such a place for us. Revelation 21.23 says, The city has no need of the light of sun or moon, because the glory of God lights the city, and the Lamb is its lamp. And in John 14.2, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. What is significant is that all sorrow, fear, pain, and discomfort will be gone in heaven. We will not have to face suffering and death, anguish and trouble. All of the trials of this life will be over, and we will enjoy peace, love, joy, and blessing. Revelation 7:16 7, and 17 tells us, They will neither hunger nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation 21.4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the former things have passed away. So we can indeed look forward to joy in heaven. It is the natural and logical fruit and reward for becoming God's children, having been made right with God through Christ's sacrifice, and having walked with God during the years of this life. However, we have those sour grapes people who, for whatever reason, want to despise the idea of heavenly blessings and eternal joy. They are out of sorts with life and with God, and want to sour any idea of things joyful for anyone else as well. You may have heard mockers refer to the idea of heavenly blessings as pie in the sky. They suggest that we become so heavenly-minded we are of no earthly use. They seem to despise the anticipation and expectancy we have every right to enjoy. They are like those who missed out on tickets to the big game, speaking sourly to all those lined up to go in. They have no joy in themselves, so they resort to attacking the joy of those much more blessed than they are. However, there is no reason all those sour grapes people don't also get to enjoy heaven. Mostly they have decided to resist God and the message of the gospel, and then to despise those who open their heart to God. We will hear music far more entrancing and delightful than the world's most glorious concerts. We will enjoy feelings richer than the greatest delights we have known on earth. We will feel secure like never before, and favoured more powerfully than life can offer. That's why we will have abundant joy, and at the same time we will know that we did not deserve one instant of all those blessings. We are unworthy and hopeless people who did not save ourselves. Christ did it all for us, and God kept us even from our own helplessness. That will be wonderfully joyful. Jude verses 24 and 25 says, To him that will keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Saviour, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power through Jesus Christ our Lord, now and for ever. Amen. All those things that make you sad on earth, through your own experiences or rejection, struggle, pain, and failure, will be irrelevant in heaven. 
there'll be no sorrow there. You may well remember all your foolish selfishness and every blunder and painful thing you've managed to do, but without pain and sorrow. What amazing joy that can overpower every unhappy thing in our heart and mind. That's what happens at salvation too. We know we are a sinner and we shrink at the horror of our unworthiness before God and then we are forgiven and made right despite every wrong thing. It's overwhelming. Joy trumps pain so powerfully that we can look our failure and defeat in the face and smile that it has no power over us. Friends, there are great joys awaiting you, but the Holy Spirit also gives you joy right now. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit the Holy Spirit produces inside you. So cry out to God for joy. Galatians 5.22 tells us, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. The blessings awaiting us in this life and in heaven are better than we can imagine, which reminds me of the chorus of the hymn, We Have Found the Christ Who Is All in All, written in 1900 by Barnard E. Warren, a minister who authored over 7,000 hymns. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, and the half has never yet been told. Friends, thank the Lord for joy He provides, and look forward to an eternity delighting with joy in heaven. God bless you.